Scott, thank you for those challenging words. Um, and uh, we are, albeit one step removed, familiar um, with much of what's happening in the United States. Perhaps we have the, the luxury of being able to reflect with what we think is uh, a little more dispassion. But indeed, many of the uh, resonances we see across our own culture. Neil Ormrod is somebody who's been immersed in Australian Catholic culture and theology for many, many years. Let's welcome Neil as he provides a response to, uh, to what Scott's offered us. Well, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me also acknowledge the original owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Oro Nation and their elders past and present as we try and lift some of our own amnesiac fog uh, in the Australian context. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Affinity for inviting me here today and uh, John for, for moderating this session and particularly Scott for his words. Um, what I picked up there, the notions of peril and promise of difference. Let me begin by just talking a bit about the similarities uh, rather than the differences uh, that I've experienced. And I'll think of the trip that I made to Turkey with Affinity uh, now about 10 years ago. And um, I was uh, overwhelmed by the hospitality of the people. Uh, they're welcoming us into their family life for evening meals. And there were many things similar that I was struck by. Uh, a concern for family, uh, their children, uh, their education, their health and well-being, their moral formation, a concern for the future, uh, a generosity and a service to others. Uh, and what I recognised in that uh, is something that I you know, see in a, in a lot of settings is flourishing that to me these were exemplars of people who were flourishing as human beings. Uh, and more and more I'm finding it uh, less and less helpful to put people into a particular box called religion as explanatory of the behaviours that I see uh, and more and more to focus on the reality of the form of life that people are living. Uh, and undeniably to me, these were examples of human flourishing and Scott has provided us with um, uh, other examples of that uh, derived from um, the teachings of Batula Gulan. Um, but of course there are also differences, there are cultural differences, um, social differences in terms of social organisation, artistic differences, the little plates with their intricate designs, always lovely. Um, and it's also, I think, important to try and understand differences where possible, not just enumerate them. What are the, what are the underlying sources of this? Uh, some of them are fairly superficial. Um, we in Australia always talk about our multiculturalism. The first thing people will talk about will be food and how the foods are different and how enriching it is to have those differences. But there are other differences which are much deeper. They're about ways of looking at the world, ways of comprehending the world. And in our own context, perhaps uh, nothing more powerful than the differences between sort of Western European ways of looking at the world and those of our Aboriginal um, uh, brothers and sisters, the first inhabitants. There's a real cultural divide there, which I think we struggle to comprehend. Um, some of these differences, particularly when we look at political and uh, some of the cultural aspects, I can say, yes, there are differences between this nation and that nation. But when I look back in history, I know that those are part of movements in history and often what I see in other places I know have been part of our own history as well, uh, if we go back far enough. Um, some of, the, some of the differences are clearly, clearly religious differences in terms of what we believe. Um, so Muslims and, and Christians perhaps have different conceptions of God. Uh, but more and more I think the differences which strike me are the differences within religion, within that box that we try and put people in. 
Uh, and again, to refer to uh, the US context that Scott has talked about, uh, to me it's quite shocking that um, something like 60% of white Catholics in the US voted for Donald Trump. I find this just unintelligible, unimaginable. Uh, and I'm sure Scott probably feels the same. These are... No, I find it perfectly understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in it. Uh, but these are people like me, white Catholics. Um, and uh, so there are other differences. And so the dividing line for me, the, the, the sort of difference that I'm looking at uh, is not between religions or cultures uh, because these often don't explain what's really significant. To me, the dividing line that I'm concerned about is between different modes of human flourishing, different conceptions. Though often this is not formulated. It's not as if people necessarily have a clearly formulated conception of what human flourishing is. But it's manifest in their form of living. Uh, and to me, that then becomes the significant difference. Um, there are lots of differences which, as Scott has said, um, contribute to human flourishing. They enrich human life. They make life wonderful uh, and truly are to be celebrated. But there are other differences, I think, which don't contribute to human flourishing. They're the differences between ignorance and knowledge. <coughs> They're the difference between arrogance and humility. They're the difference between brutality and gentleness. Differences between festering resentment, often over generations, and the ability to forgive. Differences, dare I say, between fear and love. Uh, Australian uh, cartoonist and poet uh, Michael Lunig uh, has a very small uh, little um, uh, cartoon, poem, prayer, uh, there are only two differences, fear and love, fear and love. Um, now, these are not just personal attributes, but these are differences which are culturally reinforced. And I think there's, if, you know, if we want to talk about the science of hope, the science of hope are in those movements which promote knowledge, which promote humility, which promote, promote gentleness, which promote forgiveness and promote love as constitutive of a human flourishing that generates other differences with which we can celebrate and enjoy and uh, really immerse ourselves in while turning away from ignorance, arrogance, brutality, resentment and fear. Um, so that's the... There, that, that's my reflections, if you like, on the issue of differences and similarity. And thank you for your time.